Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. Today I'm citing a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in September of 2017. So the study was designed to examine the effect of magnesium supplementation on blood pressure in individuals who were pre-diabetic, had insulin resistance, or they had a chronic degenerative disease, but they also had high blood pressure. So the study reviewed all the available randomized control studies that have used magnesium supplementation to try to reduce high blood pressure in patients with this profile. So after pooling the evidence from the 11 studies that were available, the researchers reported the following findings. So the total number of high blood pressure patients included in the 11 clinical trials included 543 high blood pressure individuals. And the follow-up period was one to six months. So they gave them magnesium supplements for either one month or up to six months, with the average uh, uh, range or the period was about three months. All the studies reported blood pressure readings at the beginning of the trial, then at the end. So they got a baseline level, then they looked to see if there was a change over the one to six month period. So the results showed that magnesium supplementation resulted in an average reduction in systolic blood pressure of over four uh, millimeters of mercury and a reduction of, in diastolic pressure of over two millimeters of mercury. So these are actually very impressive findings. So as a result, the researchers concluded the following, quote, the pooled results suggest that magnesium supplementation significantly lowers blood pressure in individuals with insulin resistance, prediabetes, or other non-communicable chronic diseases. So here's my take on this. To reduce high blood pressure using nutrition and lifestyle strategies, the most important ways include number one, losing excess weight if you're overweight. This has been shown to be the most important thing you can do. And you don't have to lose all the weight. Just losing sometimes 10 to 15 pounds can bring your blood pressure down to normal in about two-thirds of cases. So reducing body fat is the, the first uh, priority. And doing aerobic exercise five times a week for 30 minutes is also extremely helpful in lowering blood pressure and improving uh, cardiovascular risk profiles. Now as for supplements, a number of studies have shown that calcium supplementation of 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day lowers blood pressure in a lot of people. So now based on this study that I'm talking about today, it may be wise to ingest a supplement that contains calcium and magnesium. And remember that both of these nutrients work synergistically also to help support bone density. Also know this that supplementation with coenzyme Q10 and Hawthorne have shown very impressive blood pressure lowering effects along with the ingestion of beetroot juice. So in beets, when you drink beetroot juice, there's a lot of nitrates, and nitrates help to dilate blood vessels and that lowers blood pressure. Of course, it's a very good idea to lower your sodium intake, most people know that. And remember that in the presence of chronic kidney disease, supplements, in, supplements with magnesium in particular would not be warranted as they could actually make the condition worse. But for most people, these nutrition and lifestyle strategies, along with either meditation or progressive relaxation or deep breathing exercises, are strong considerations to help reduce blood pressure in addition to blood pressure lowering medications. So I've included a scientific reference for this study in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.